A new era of aircraft has already begun. The fastest airplane ever built. Technology that'll change the world forever. And it's not about NASA or Japanese projects worth billions of dollars, but essentially a garage development in Atlanta, Georgia. How did it happen? Sit back and get ready for an incredible story. In 2018, a group of enthusiastic engineers founded Hermes, which moved into its first office only a year later. And in 2024, they're building an aircraft for the U.S. Army. And not just any aircraft, but a supersonic quarter horse with a maximum speed of more than Mach 5 or 3,800 miles per hour to be exact. For your understanding, it'll take 50 minutes to travel from New York to London. The Quarter Horse is a small aircraft, only 130 feet long, which is intended to be a technology demonstrator rather than a production aircraft. However, the next version, called the Dark Horse, may already become a production model. Serious tests of Hermes technologies took place in 2023 and included takeoff from the ground, testing of engine functions and control systems. How did this company achieve such progress? And all because the idea of supersonic aircraft is back on the agenda? As of 2024, the US Army needs a machine that's faster than the legendary Lockheed Martin SR-71 Blackbird. The thing that's special about the Blackbird was it was all miracles. Despite its futuristic appearance, this aircraft has long been decommissioned. It made its first flight on December 22, 1964, and could operate at high altitudes, which allowed it to avoid enemy threats. To acquire the titanium and the volume necessary, while not giving away the fact that you were building something like the Blackbird, was a security challenge. The SR-71 was designed to fly faster than any aircraft in the Soviet Union at the time. The Blackbird was revolutionary because it was the first aircraft designed for sustained flight at 2,000 miles per hour. The engineers aimed for a speed of over 1,900 miles per hour, and they more than succeeded. During its strategic missions, the SR-71 could fly at Mach 3.3, which is still unattainable today, even by fifth-generation fighters. The speed of the SR-71 allowed it to evade enemy surface-to-air missiles. It was so fast that by the time the missile was able to track the SR-71 and identify it as a target, it was too late to launch. Even if the missile had been launched, the SR-71 would have been far beyond the blast radius. Nowadays, the U.S. Air Force is facing the opposite problem. The latest Russian and Chinese missiles, such as Kinzhal, Zircon, or Dongfeng-17, are ahead of aircraft. Even if the characteristics of the missiles are overstated, it'll be difficult for modern fighters to cope with them. Therefore, the United States is actively helping startups that are ready to introduce new technology and outpace competitors. However, the United States is not only interested in military aircraft. In 2020, Hermes received a contract worth a ridiculous $1.5 million for the U.S. Army to develop an aircraft that'll be used for the U.S. President's flights. A year later, this amount grew to $60 million, allowing the company to realize its dream of a civilian supersonic aircraft. It'll be called the Halcyon and will eventually replace the current VC-25A and VC-25B. The VC-25A was created on the basis of Boeing 747-200B passenger aircraft, which were very popular for long-distance flights. The U.S. President and his delegation have 4,000 square feet of space on three levels, According to the White House, the VC-25A has no range restrictions as the aircraft has an air-to-air -air refueling system. Given the age of the VC-25A, former President Donald Trump ordered the construction of two new airliners. They were designated VC-25B. According to the U.S. Air Force, the first VC-25B will be ready in 2027 and the second in 2028. At that time, the VC-25A aircraft will have been in service for 38 years. Isn't it time to take a step forward to supersonic? Let's take a look at how the heroes of our video are going to achieve super speeds worthy of a presidential jet. The secret, of course, is in the engine, which is called Chimmer. Most hypersonic platforms are equipped with a rocket engine, which limits performance, maintainability, and reliability. Rocket fuel greatly reduces the efficiency of engines, so Hermes uses air in its Chimmer. It sounds crazy, but no one's been able to implement such a technology. To describe the process very roughly, it looks something like a car with a turbine, but on a hypersonic scale. 
This technology combines the ideas of a turbo engine and a jet engine to create something fundamentally new. However, Hermes is not the only one developing hypersonic technologies. On January 12th, the NASA Space Agency and Lockheed Martin demonstrated the X-59 experimental supersonic aircraft. The aircraft is scheduled to make its maiden flight in 2024. After NASA completes the flight tests, a flight will be flown over several selected U.S. cities, collecting information about the sound generated by the X-59 and how people perceive it. NASA will provide this data to the Federal Aviation Administration and international regulators. As a leader in aeronautics research, NASA is working to reduce the sounds produced by aircraft. The shape of the airplane and technological advances will make quite supersonic flight possible. The thin and tapered nose makes up almost a third of its length and breaks up the shock waves that normally result in the sonic boom of a supersonic aircraft. A special feature of the X-59 is the significantly lower volume of the sound impact that occurs when the sound barrier is overcome. Other airplanes, when they reach supersonic speed, emit a loud explosion-like roar. X-59 will be able to fly at supersonic speeds, faster than the speed of sound, without producing a loud sonic boom. Instead, the X-59 will emit a soft thud when it reaches the speed of sound. To make the flight much quieter, the engineers had to modify the design of the aircraft. The cockpit does not have a front windshield, so X-59 pilots will use the external vision system technology, an external vision system that allows a camera to transmit images ahead of the aircraft to the screen in the cockpit. We wonder what actions are prescribed in case of failure of this display or camera. Nevertheless, it's worth paying attention to another competitor of Hermes, which specializes in hypersonic drones. The Exosonic Incorporated company has already received a contract from the U.S. Air Force. And we recently were awarded a U.S. Air Force contract. It involves the development of a demonstrator of a new supersonic unmanned aerial vehicle. This development is designed to help in training of pilots acting as an equal to the enemy fighter. We're not thinking of using afterburners, but the takeoff might be a little bit more aggressive than your regular subsonic aircraft. Due to training budget constraints and a shortage of pilots, the U.S. Air Force is currently unable to effectively train fighter pilots. As a result, only a limited number of pilots receive appropriate air combat training necessary for the defense of the country. Equipped with a variety of payloads and sensors, the Exosonic UAV will be able to conduct combat training at a fraction of the current cost of such exercises involving manned fighters. It can save millions of dollars spent on training as well as reduce the wear and tear on existing U.S. Air Force combat aircraft. So Hermes had a lot of competitors, but it's worth mentioning those who might have inspired them to create hypersonic aircraft. After the advent of supersonic bombers in the 1950s, many countries came up with the idea of producing a passenger aircraft of this type. Competition amongst the engineers um, and the national prides involved led to a very successful machine. In Britain and France, government programs have been launched to produce a supersonic airplane. The parts were produced separately by British and French factories. The final assembly also took place at two factories in different countries, simultaneously in Felton and Toulouse. It turned out even better than planned. The airplane, called Concorde, could accelerate to 1,350 miles per hour. It was the best performance among passenger airplanes at the time. Due to this speed, the fuselage of the aircraft heated up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit and could grow by seven inches. I mean, when a supersonic aircraft flies over a town, a suburb, or a city, it will smash loose windows. However, thanks to its speed, the Concorde covered the distance between London and New York in three hours and 20 minutes, which is twice as fast as a conventional plane. The many pilots all over the world would, would have loved to, to fly the Concorde, but there were only a few of them. However, due to the use of the latest engineering concepts and technologies, it was very costly to build a supersonic airliner. Although 74 Concords were ordered by various world airlines by 1972, only nine were sold at a reduced price. It was wonderful, but the costs were racking up all the time. Due to high airplane prices, rising fuel prices after the 1973 oil crisis, and the development of the much more fuel-efficient Boeing 747, the popularity of the supersonic airliner has fallen significantly. Did, did not want Concorde in the least. They had no interest in the airplane whatsoever. I'm talking about the management of the airline.
The incident of July 25, 2000 in Paris when a plane took off from Charles de Gaulle Airport added to the fear. As a result, the wheel burst, tire fragments punctured the fuel tank and damaged electrical wires causing a serious fire. The pilots tried to save the plane, but to no avail. According to experts, the crash was a reason for airlines to stop working on this model of aircraft. In 2003, civilian hypersonic aircraft were banned by law. Therefore, this is another challenge that engineers developing hypersonic civilian aircraft should take on. They must be quiet, safe, and environmentally friendly. We believe that everything will work out because the global civilian technology sector is developing from the military one. First, advanced technologies are introduced by the military, and then civilian counterparts appear. This is exactly the way Hermes went to achieve their dream, and we hope to travel the world on their aircraft. And we hope for your likes and subscriptions, no less. See you soon.